Mary at the Marriottier, and it is Saturday, April 24th. <laughs> I just ended my Friday night stream about an hour ago, but I wanted to come on and introduce the hop for this morning. We've got a Saturday hop coming on, and I had a little bit of a technical difficulty here. So my link isn't going to be the same as the links that I sent out. I have to figure that one out. But, hi Mrs. Gigi. Good morning. I wanted to come on and introduce the people that are hopping this morning. Now this is a video hop. It's not a live stream hop. So even though the videos will go live, I would put a schedule in the description box below after they go live. I can't do it now because they're not live yet. So you would just get dead links. But I want to go through. We've got several people hopping with us. We've got Tanya McGuire and Artfully Blind with Diana and Mrs. Gigi, who's in the room here, and Bootsy Sweetheart, Roy Smith, and designs by CAD Pro, Tim, Tim McDowell, I can't pronounce his last name. I'll just call him Tim, and Janet Nash, and then myself. So we have a theme for, for these hops, and this month the theme is going to be One Technique, Three Ways. And it's going to be very interesting. Let me get back in chat here. It's going to be very interesting to see how I challenge them to pick a piece of art that they have done previously and pick a technique that they used on that piece of art. You know how I sometimes go through the uh, art journaling magazine and the Somerset studio and I look at the pages on there and look at the techniques that they use and then I try to duplicate that on my project. Well, that's kind of what I want wanted want to do in this theme is to look at a piece of art and look at a technique on there and then try different ways of doing that same technique. Now, not everybody's going to be doing the same thing. And also, not everybody likes all the themes. Some, sometimes those themes don't jive with where you are at this at the time. So I, I said, well, if you want to pick a different one, it can have a wild card theme and just do what you want. So you may see a little variation of themes in there. Also, you may see some technical difficulties, like I had trouble getting on this morning. So um, my link that is going to be in all the other links will be a dead link. So I'll have to have I'll have to email them and give them the link to this stream. So there will be technical difficulties along the way. That's just how it is for the internet, isn't it? Yeah. So let's say good morning to folks. Hi, Mrs. Gigi and Nancy and Renee. And there's Beth Schuler. She was with me for a good portion of last night. <laughs> So I'm actually going to work on my technique in addition to introducing the videos because I can't really talk about what they did because I'll be learning about what the the participants in the hop do along with you. I did make me a fresh cup of tea. Blackberry or black cherry tea. Courtesy of Pink Girly. So the technique that that I chose was something I'm currently working on. But I did do a project, and I did this tag. Let me zoom in just a little so you can see this a little better. I'm a little far away. Let me zoom in. And maybe turn my camera up a little. There we go. So I did this tag probably this month sometime. But I've been learning a lot about rusting. And so I want to take the rusting technique. You can see here I've rusted I've rusted fabric here and the background is actually rusted paper and it's actually several layers of paper. If you could see this, there are several layers of paper here that when when I put it in the pan and then I cooked it, well I let it sit out in the sun, but I also cooked it in the oven and 
some of these papers actually glued together. Not all of them. I've got some other papers I'm going to show you. So I want to take some of these techniques. Now this was not rust. I might have put a layer of rust over there, but I think I used black walnut on. I sprayed black walnut on this, black walnut ink. Or I might have even used Tim Holtz. I can't remember what I did on that. But I want to use some of the techniques of rusting. Here's another one that I did. I did this one today. Well, Friday, actually. My days are running together because I haven't been to bed yet. But uh, um, I have a $5 sewing machine that I got at the thrift store. And I was in Becky's uh, Facebook room this morning. And they were showing me how to get that machine up and going. But I sewed a piece of rusty cloth. Where's my rusty cloth? It's right here. And this is actually a technique. So this is one of the techniques is sewing rusting cloth on a page. So um, I'm not going to sew here, but I wanted to show you this. And this is actually going to be one page out of an art journal. Now, um, I have a whole bag of rusty bits and pieces here and you guys have seen me do this but I want to show you this kind of another technique I rusted some grommets and as I was pulling them out of the pan I'm going wouldn't it be neat to actually put grommets on a page when I when I do a journal I'm going to do an art journal and so this is another way another technique is to rust your grommets and put on there and pinch them in there so when you bind your journal this journal was actually made out of scrap paper this was the leftover of die cuts i have several of these i i want to say about 40 of them but i don't remember exactly how many i have but i have a lot of these die cut pages and i've been putting um i'm trying to use up my scraps so I've been putting scrap paper on the back and I'll go in and, but that's not part of today's. Today's is talking about using the rusting, rusted cloth here and the grommets as a rusting technique. But I have a couple of things that I want to try here in front of you guys. Hi Rhonda, you're back. Good morning, good morning. I I'm wide awake, Rhonda. I'll sleep early, I'll sleep later. Um I could go through and show you all of this. Uh, I've rusted string, I've rusted lace, I've rusted fabric, I've rusted safety pins and bobby pins. Here's my rusted bobby pins. They didn't get put in there. And they did rust. They did rust once I put them at the bottom of the tray and put that liquid over them and let it cook in the oven. They did rust up very nice. So, but some of the things, and one thing I really want to show you guys that I just found out this morning because I was, I was wanting to, I was talking, I was actually, Rosemary had come in when I was showing one of my rusted projects. When I was pulling it out of the pan here, here's what's left in the pan. And I had a lot of gooey water down at the bottom. And Rosemary said, well, I paint with that. So that's something I want to try. But what I want to show you this is I have this paper sitting in the bottom of the... I made a, a tray, an aluminum tray, just out of full tin foil or aluminum foil. And... Uh, um, as I pulled this up, I have to show you this because this is very interesting. This is just a hole in my paper. I'm going to kind of push some of that gritty stuff off. I'm going to save that paper, but I'm going to... Look what happened to the aluminum foil. Isn't that interesting? Look what happened to it. Look at that. Talk about rusted metal. Look at that. I think that is cool. And look, I got, this was, this was my first layer of aluminum foil that I put all the, the rusty solution on. The rusty solution that I use is um, 
three parts hydrogen peroxide to one part water. And then I add about a tablespoon and a half of salt. And I didn't have time to mix any of it up. But what I want to try here, I want to play with this. I'm going to pull it out and kind of save it off. Let's. And I would recommend wearing gloves when you work with this stuff. Maybe I'll get a pair out here. Um, because it is, it's rust. And rust is just oxidation. Let me get to my glove. My glove shelf here someplace. One more turn of the wheel. Where did my gloves go off to? Did they fall? Well, I got one glove. One's better than none. What, what happened to my other gloves? Did I stick them in another compartment? There they are. No. Those are glue sticks. I don't know what I did with my gloves. So I guess I won't wear them this morning, but I usually put plastic gloves on when I work with this. I'll just have to be extra careful. I have a feeling they might have fallen on the, down the, over the cliff. I call things going over the cliff. If I need them, I'll put that one on. But what I want to do is take this off and let's just put it, let's just put it on a piece of paper here. And I think this is kind of cool. You'd have to be interested in this, but I think this will make a nice texture. I think this is really cool stuff. And it'll be interesting just to collage that down. And I suppose the collage medium will actually activate some of that rust. And I'm just going to pull this top layer off that's kind of deteriorating. And I don't know um, rust if it once it rusts if it's if once it's no longer wet if it's still active if it's still rusting I don't know the scientific part of that I imagine if I get it wet again I guess that's enough to play with I don't need everything but what I want to do in here is actually clean it out clean this part out here. I want to do two things. Let's see, do I want to save that? Maybe I'll save this piece and throw this away. Hi Santa, good morning lady. Renee is here. Good morning ladies. And I'm going to be on until I'll, I'll probably get off around 5, 5, uh, 15 or so because I need to get off in time for all the other videos to come live, to go live. So I've got a lot of grit and stuff down here at the bottom. Now I didn't have time. Let me just put this aside here. I'll put it someplace safe. <laughs> Where is that? I did not have time to mix up another rusting solution. So what I want to see is if I can reactivate this. Now this is experiment for me. And I want to see if I can paint with it like Rosemary does. And just by adding water to this and reactivating, I might add a little peroxide to it. I don't know. I don't have any vinegar in here, but I do have my peroxide. Let's start by adding just some plain water to it. And let's see if I can reactivate some of this to paint with. And I'm thinking that I probably can, because look at that. Look at that. And Rosemary, this is Rosemary Morris's fault. Because she said, Mary, I paint with it. <laughs> so that's what Mary's going to do. She's going to... Let me just pour instead of squirt. Let's, because this is all, this is safe to put liquid in. Let's just pour it. And we're going to, this is one technique is we're going to paint with rust. Now, whether I do this all the time or not is another story. Probably not. But it just interested me that rosemary, I guess I'm going to have to add more. If I had a little dish, I would put it in a dish. There. 
it interested me that Rosemary said that she painted with it. Now, whether she was being true, I mean, if she maybe she might have been teasing me. I don't know, but I thought, oh, let's paint with it. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can stir this up a little. Let's get a let's get a brush and let's see if I can. I it does reactivate and. All it is, truthfully, it's it's where the, our where the metal has oxidized with the peroxide and vinegar. So it isn't. It, this isn't dirt per se. This is this is a, a a really a metal, an oxidized metal, which I guess you could call metal dirt. But so are. Yeah, and in my other stream, I was telling the gals how even Daniel Smith makes their watercolors out of some rocks, and they they grind them up real fine. And no, I don't know if that all their watercolors are made that way, but if you go back and read their page, so this is this interests me. So let's see if I can just. This is not going to be a, a well. Let's see what kind of a painting this is going to be. Let me get a let me get a sheet of. Let's just paint on this this piece of ATC that I didn't. I was cutting ATCs and my blade was my blade was uh, dull, so I had to change my blade. So I didn't use this paper. So let's just now. There's some grit in there. I see grit. So you have to be you have to be okay with grit. And as I look at well, yeah, some of it's darker than the other. So do you want to paint with rust? Um, you have to be okay with it being gritty. Alright, I'm kinda liking what's happening there. Just as an experiment. Let's get a towel and blot that and see what happens. Mary, let's get a towel. Here they are. <laughs> Here he goes. Where's my paper towels? Hi, Peggy. Welcome, welcome. And I want to remind you that the my link in the other streams will not go to this video. Because I had trouble getting on this morning. I had to restart my... I don't know. It was doing something weird I didn't expect. Isn't that like YouTube? So, yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. And after it dries, let's dry it and see if I can't wipe off some of that grit. I like the tone. I like the the tonal value of it. I'm going to wipe it back off in here. I don't want it on my desk per se. So that can, you know, that can just wipe off and then you've got that stain on there. Now my paper's wet. Um uh, This is a cardstock paper. So I guess you could paint with it. Could could make a nice background out. It's kind of light, but it is rusty. And I did zoom in. I could probably zoom out now. Let me zoom out a little. I wanted you guys to see the tag up close. And yeah, this is grungy. That's what you can just call this is grunge. But actually, all it is is oxidized metal. When you stop to think about it, it isn't filthy dirty. Well, it looks dirty, but it's it's oxidized metal is what it is. Um, bobby pins and paper clips. and Let's put another layer on here and see if I can get this darker. Yeah. Let's, let's do something. Oh, I got... Is that coming off of there? I don't know where that's coming from. Let's, put a, let's bring that up like that, I think. There. My desktop. My desktop. I don't know where all that water's coming from. But it's 
it's nothing that hasn't happened to this desktop before. Something's leaking, I think, under here. Let me get another piece of tin foil. Yep, that happens online when you're when you're working. Yep, yep. Let me work and find the tin foil here. Of course, it's the last one I pull out. I pulled out four packages of wax paper. Where's my tin foil? Here it is. We're going to put another layer of tin foil under there. I think it might have oxidized. I'll just take this and put it on top of that. Like this. I poured a lot of water. I'll throw this all away when I'm done. I'll throw it all on the paper sack. And I just wanted to see if I really could paint with it. Now, would you would you do that? Well, I don't know. Would I do that? It, depending if I wanted that rusty look on my page, I might. Now, let's get a towel and wipe up this mess that I have here. Let me reach down. Beth, your bumblebee was absolutely adorable, Peggy says. She loved your adorable bumblebee. So, am I telling you to make rust and paint with it? No. I'm saying... This is something fun to experiment with. It's a technique. And what I want to do is I put this paper back on that wet desktop. So I'm going to have to dry this again. I want to see if I can make this rust darker. It got really wet. So painting with it is one technique. The traditional techniques are just resting onto. Resting your ribbon, resting your fabric, uh, resting lace, resting bobby pins and paper clips and safety pins and all of that. And sewing that strip of fabric onto that art journal page was a technique. So there's two or three techniques right in there. All right, so, and painting, painting with it. Now, Rosemary Morris, I don't know if she was being serious when she told me she painted with it. But I'm going, see, I think if you do, it's like the walnut ink. If you do more than one layer, now I'll dry this again. I'll dry it again and, and wipe off that grit. Um, if I had some already made up as a liquid, I could just... I wouldn't have to paint off of the, I wouldn't have to bottom feed here. That's what I'm actually doing is I'm just scraping off what's in the bottom and putting it on my paper. It really makes a nice, a really nice background in its own way. So this would make a nice rusty ATC, Beth Schuler. I'm not going to send it in as an ATC, but it, it kind of makes a nice, rusty background okay let's dry that and wipe off the grit I don't want to leave the grit on there I don't see it getting much darker per se it's kind of a light rusty color um, I wouldn't even call it orange it's kind of a light I almost want to say a yellow ochre in a way a light tannish yellow but that could be because of what I used to rust I don't know if different objects rust with different colors 
I think you can get a deep red dress. Probably iron will give you a more of a reddish hue. If you rusted iron, iron I think would give you a reddish hue. I don't know that for sure. I didn't rust anything iron. Rosemary could probably tell you that. The other rusty person that I've watched and been watching has been Lisa Conway. She rusts stuff. All right, let's wipe this. Let me get another paper towel here. And I'm going to wipe this grit off. Just kind of wipe the top stuff off so that it's... Oh, I'm so good. It's kind of an interesting color, though. Now you could do the same thing with probably watercolor or acrylic, but this is this is really its own property in its own way. It almost looks like aged paper, doesn't it? It almost aged. I wonder if you could do this with text. Let's get out a dictionary page. Now I'm getting interested in it. Let's get out a dictionary page and and smear some of that on a dictionary page. I'll just tear a page out here. Let's move this back. Do I need to zoom out more? I feel like you guys are... Maybe I was going to zoom out and I got distracted with the wet desk. Let's push that up. Let's get my dictionary out. We're going to... Of course, my dictionary is upside down because my morning's upside down. Let's tear a page out of here. And let's rest a... Let's age this page. Age the page. And I'm just going to dip my brush in this water and do this. Now you could do the same thing with other media. Of course you can. But this is fun. This is fun. If you want to be a bottom feeder here. Here, look, there's a paper clip in here. How cool is that? Is there anything else in there that I missed? I don't think so. Yeah, Mary. We're going to do this just because you are. <laughs> just because you and Rosemary are crazy enough to do it, we'll try it. You know, and it's it's fun to think this was paper clip and bobby pin and what else? Safety pins and peroxide and vinegar is and salt that made this stuff. There, oh, I kind of like this. The page is division, from dive to division. All right, let's dry this off. I might have to see if I can give this another coat. 503, I, I have a couple other things I want to do before. I'm going to try to get off here at around 515 or 520 before the other videos come on. Because I want to put the I want to put the screen list in my description box after I'm done. After 5:30, after everything goes live, I'll put I'll put the video list in my description box. But it won't help to do it now because they're not live yet. They haven't woke up. Okay, let's wipe the grit off here and see if I can. This is kind of cool. Kind of a cool page here. And it actually, I think some of this actually soaked into those dark spots. Are kind of cool. They might. It's kind of wet yet. 
so as it dries they may lighten up a little but I like those spots so this could make a nice background for like an ATC or a journal page or tag something aged an aged page that says dive and division that feels pretty good I don't think I'm going to give that another layer I like it like that so I'm going to throw this away I'm actually done with this so I'm glad I think you guys are be glad to see it go huh let's just roll it up and put it in my trash bag here I actually have a grocery bag that I use as a litter bag here, and it works better than my waste basket. And when I'm done, I just take it and toss it out. All right. So there's that. Ooh, it feels still feels kind of gritty though. I suppose it will while it's still wet. All right. So the other thing I wanted to try, I have some, I had some grit right here. So there's two things I want to try with this real fast. Let me get a, a paper out here. Let me get a card, piece of cardstock. You know, this is, this, this came off of the objects as I was pulling them out. And I don't have a whole lot of it. There's just that much. But what I want to try are two things. Yeah, Mary gets crazy with this stuff, let me tell you. Mary gets a little crazy with it. Let's try. Yeah, let's try this one. Let's try. And what I found out when I was playing with this stuff is it actually stains the paper. It actually can stain your paper. And I was wondering if I could stencil with it like a chalk almost. And why would you want to do that? For the fun of it. I don't know as if I would do it as a, on a regular basis, but it's interesting to try different things when you're doing this stuff and learning about it. So what all I'm going to do is take and I'm going to pour some of this out on my paper. Right there. And I've got a sponge here, a clean sponge. And I'm going to see if I can sponge. No, it works better with my finger than a sponge. Let's try my finger. Because my finger, I can, the sponge, the sponge just kind of sponges down. My finger, I can press in it on it like a almost like a chalk and let's just try a few of these and see if I can do a flower here now remember this is not dirt this is rust this is oxidized metal it, you feel like you're playing in the dirt, but you're really not. And and if you would go out to Daniel Smith, and I was telling Laura that the other day, that watercolors, Daniel Smith makes his watercolors out of rocks. And rocks are actually hard dirt. <laughs> and you stop to think about pigments and where they come from they either come from vegetable matter or from the ground so this even though it's kind of weird it's not a I haven't seen anybody sell rust as a chalk medium <laughs> but it's kind of fun it's kind of fun to play with something like this. Now, will I do it all the time? Probably not. But it's a technique to try. And we're going to... What time is it? 5.09. I have one more thing I want to try before I sign off. So, the whole point of this is to 
look at your art piece. Look at your art pieces that you did. And in my case, it was this tag. In my case, it's this tag. Now, I didn't really pull a technique off of here, except for the technique is rust. But I guess I didn't say, okay, I'm going to use rust fabric and braid it or something. I didn't do that. I could have. I could take that piece of rust fabric that I have. I'm going to use it on my, I'm going to use it on, sew it on my journal pages. But you could, you could say, okay, one of my techniques was, was rusted fabric. I could braid it. I could make a fringe out of it. Um, you know, think of different ways. Look at your past art. And it doesn't have to be a tag. It could be a drawing. It could be a painting technique. Uh, one of the things that I found really interesting, I never liked drippage. And every time they did drippage on a project, I go, oh, ooh, drippage. Until... I got the bright idea one day to um, put my ink through uh, a glycerin. And I put the glitter and the, what else did I put in there? And anyway, I let that glycerin drip with the, the pigment in it. And uh, yeah, then I got interested in, in drippage because... It was, oh, I embossed it. That's it. I put embossing powder. I had embossed drippage. That's what I did. And you can come up with so many different ways. You can come up with a lot of different ways to use things that you never dreamt of. I'm just going to kind of hurry here through the rest of this. And I don't know, this might look pretty light to you right now. It looks light to me. I It looks darker to me in person. The, the rust looks darker in person than it does on my tablet while I'm looking at this. Let's see, I want to do some around the edges here. Let's just bring that over like this and over like that. Yeah, that's a little metal grommet type thing. Now let's just bring this in. Let's just smear it down a little. And I'm going to shake this off in my waste basket to the, the gritty stuff. Let's take this off and see what it looks like on the underneath of course you have my tape there let's take some of this and put over on this area here and it'll be the same over here that's the other thing you could use masking tape to mask off some of this and there it is. Ooh, it's kind of cool. Let's let's dump this out. Let me stand up. I didn't get this area here very well. We'll just kind of rub it on it there. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool in its own way. Now, if you're not, you could kind of smear it down a little like that now there's one more thing I want to try before see we rusted our paper here we just smeared it on paper I think this makes a nice we painted on it actually I think that makes a nice background and I like this a lot and here we painted on this paper but I want to try one more thing where's my bag of goo here I have some more in here, and what I actually want to do, I think I'll do it on this paper because I can throw it off if it doesn't work. I have not tried this. This is as new to me as it is to everybody else. I'm just going to pour some out. I'll, I'll just pour the rest of it out on here, and I'll probably throw that little baggie away. I'm kind of, now I'm just going to 
Uh, let's just kind of... I don't know if I need all of this. I need a pile of it, but... What I want to do... You're going to laugh, maybe. But maybe not, too. Let's just make a... Kind of a circle in here. That's awfully big. We we'll want it smaller. We don't want it that big. It doesn't even have to be a circle. It could be a diamond. Just a shape. What time is it? It's 5.15. I'll be on for just a few more minutes. i got to be off by 5.30. All right. That's good enough. It's kind of like a makeshift diamond shape. There, 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 and there. I should have my gloves on. I want to take this glossy accent. I had trouble with this stuff this morning, but let's see if it pours out on here. Oh, of course it doesn't. That's because I want it to. It should pour out, though. It's not that stuffed up. There. And we are going to... Look at how it's reacting. Ooh, let's let's zoom in on that. Ooh, that's cool. Let's zoom in way in on it. Yeah. I wish I had my palette knife out. I might have to use my now it's it is a powdery. It's and it's kind of beating up. I think I'm gonna stir it in there. And actually, what this this glossy accent, I'll have to show this to you Sunday night. It will turn clear. But it should. It should trap all those rust particles in there is what I'm hoping. And I've got more glossy accents. And I think I can cut this after it dries. I think I can shape it up with a pair of scissors. Let's see if I can stir this a little with my tip of my paintbrush. I tell you, I'm hard on my... Look, it's running. That's okay if it runs. Let's stir it up a little. This is Mary experimenting. Now, why would you want to do this? I don't know. Maybe you want a sloppy goo on your page. Ooh, I kind of like that, though. Actually, I was thinking more of letting it dry and then cutting it into a shape. And it's kind of, right now, it's kind of like a... <laughs> we won't say what it looks like. But it's kind of interesting. Think of it, it's just, it's just metal. It's metal that's oxidized. I think it was... I, you know, my uncle... And he's long gone now. He lived in, they lived in Colorado. And I'd go visit him. And he'd take iron shavings like this only. He'd get them at a body shop, a car body shop. I asked him where he got them. And he said he got them at the local body shop where, at that time, where I don't know what they were doing, but that's where he got them. And he spread all those iron shavings out on his grass and he says if you put those iron shavings on your bare spots on your lawn it will it will uh it will cause it to grow and and cause the grass to grow and cover up all the ugly spots and he had a beautiful lawn i don't know what rust will do to it <laughs> probably make more bare spots i'm going to put that back in the water now, let's put some more. I'm thinking that this will will uh, dry clear. The, the glossy accent will dry clear. And I'm thinking that I can cut a shape out of it, like a circle or a diamond. And just have a rusty shape. We'll see. Just as an interest thing. That's a technique. That's a technique. <laughs> Make a rusty glue glue shape. 
so I've done this. We've, oh, I haven't even showed you all the things that I've done. We've got rusty paper here that I'm going to save this off. This is cool. This is pretty cool, but I've got to clean off all the grit. I'm not going to do that tonight. So this is a technique. It's just to even use the paper that you let things rust on. Clean it off. Rusty fabric is a technique. Sewing fabric on, on a page. Like this was done in the art journaling magazine. Oh, I'm zoomed in. Hold it. Let me zoom out. All right, let's go back. This is a technique. Painting on paper with rusty leftover is a technique. Going through a sponge with the rusty grit that's left over is a technique. It's almost like chalk. I have to say it's almost like chalk. This is a technique of sewing the fabric onto an art journal page. Your rusted fabric is a technique. Your paper, your paper, your rusty paper is a technique. Making a tag out of it. And here's my rusty fabric here. Rust your rusted grommets on your on your tags or your pages i'm going to put rusted grommets on my art journal pages so those are all my three techniques that i'm learning and i'm sure there are more i'm sure there are more let me pull these down a little i'm interested to see how this is going to dry up this is this is cool after it dries i'll probably cut it into a shape so it is 521. Uh, the videos go live at 530. Thank you all for coming. Beth Schuler's here. There's Linda McAllister. <laughs> Teresa's here. Uh, let's see. Teresa says, not unless Mary sends me some. I don't have anything to rust. You need safety pins and paper clips and and uh, what else? <laughs> Teresa says severe storms are possible in her area. Oh, it's getting to be tornado season. Yeah, we don't like tornadoes, do we, Teresa? And to think that as kids, our parents told us not to play with rusty stuff or we could get lockjaw. I didn't know that. I Well, I do try to wear gloves. I, I didn't have them out today. I couldn't find, I found one glove. I couldn't find what I did with the others, but I always wash my hands real good after I'm done. I wash it up with lab, with lava soap. Uh, I don't like dirty hands. <laughs> so, um, I suppose you could probably, I don't know if, if this could harm you or not. I, I don't know. You could be careful. Um, but we do use it a lot in our art. I suppose that it is just as, as uh, my parents always told me to stay away from rusty tin cans because you could cut yourself. Uh, you know, the old tin cans have sharp edges when they rust. And what, oh, I was going to show you that aluminum foil again. What did I do with that? That aluminum foil piece. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know what I did with it. I set it aside in a safe spot. Right here. Look at this aluminum foil. This is cool stuff. I don't know if I can get locked off from this or not. I don't think I can because I think if you wash your hands, you'll be okay. And wear those gloves when you if you work with this stuff. I would just recommend that. I usually wear gloves. But I think this is cool stuff. I could see this collage down. It would be interesting if you put collage medium and glue over this. It would probably move some of that. But it might be making interesting. I don't have time to try it. I'll try it Sunday night probably. Because I'm not done with my rusted journal yet. So let's see. Teresa's here. Peggy's here. Brenda D, Ruth, Mary, you need to rest. I worry about you not sleeping. Oh, I sleep, Angie. 
I sleep when I'm tired. You just ask my brother. I usually get, I had a nap during Barb Owen's stream. After I watched to the point where she was die cutting the butterflies. And then I fell asleep. So, abandoned places, an old factory. Yes, that's what it reminds you of. Some old paper or phone book page found in the bottom of a desk in an old garage. That dictionary page, it does, doesn't it? You could actually tell a story. Oh, this is a dictionary page, though. Um, division. Divine. Divine office. Divine liturgy. Divine right. Oh, that's my word. A divine right is the right of a sovereign to rule. <laughs> As set forth by the theory of government that holds that a monarch receives his right to rule directly from God. <laughs> well, that's, I shouldn't laugh at that because, you know, that was, that was a governing, but look at, okay, look at this. Look at this. Now look at this. Look at the back. It's all white. Look at this. It's all rusty. <laughs> I see this as being a nice background page. I like the idea of doing the rusty grommets. I'm very interested to see how this is going to turn out. And I stirred that all up. So the, the gritty part is actually a part of the, of the glossy accent. And then I put a layer of glossy accent over it. I might leave it in that shape. This I have to clean off more before I use... And then here's the rusty fabric, and again the art, the sewn fabric on the art journal page. And here I just, I call this a rusty chalk. This feels like chalk to me. Now I'm not saying to do this unless you're into rusting. And then of course you have all your rusted pieces, like your bobby pins and your safety. I'm, let's just get them out here real fast. I'm not going to take them out of the package. I'm just going to put them out here as part of the as part of the story. Here's some rusted lace. Rusted the lace. Here's some more rusted lace. This is rusted wire that I'm going to use to bind with. And I'll probably use a uh, gloves when I make this. These are rusted bed springs. I think these are bed springs. I think that's what my brother said, that said he thought they were. And here's some more. Here's some rusty uh, safety pins. That's what the lady in our art journal magazine used was rusted safety pins. We have rusted grommets and rusted Broken jewelry. All different rusty techniques. Some more rusty fabric and lace here. Could make washi tape out of a piece of this fabric. Here's some rusted string, crochet thread. These are rusted paper clips. And what else do I have in here? Rusted paper clips. These are not paper clips. These are big clips. And these are rusted paper clips. More lace and fabric. And rusted washers. So there's my extent of my rusting play for, for today. I'll put it all away later. So I'm going to hurry up and sign off. I've got two minutes before everything comes live. Y'all have a really great, great weekend. Uh, Beth Schuler's in here. She goes live tonight. Beth, what are you going to do tonight? Do you know? Let's see if she answers. There's Jersey. So she was a, I was in a toss and turn nightclub all night. Good for coffee. Good morning, Jersey. Beth says, I will sleep well knowing you are praying over me in my little angel, Angie. Ah. 
Thank you, Teresa. So Beth Schuler will be on later tonight. She's the uh, only one that I know definitely comes on Saturdays. So I better get off. I got one minute before everything goes live there. I would put a schedule out. I'll get this. I'll get a schedule in this video as soon as it processes. But go to Tanya McGuire's page. Um, let's see, Tanya McGuire and Artfully Blind with Diana, Mrs. Gigi. You can you can go to her page, Bootsy's page, Designs by CAD Pro, Janet Nash, and any one of those pages, and you'll hit the swap. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend, and I will see you Sunday night. Bye. Beth is going to show us her needle threader. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Bye, everybody.